gentlemen, we are now into the third worldwide hour of broadcast. And we'll be back tonight, 7 o'clock Central, with InfoWars Nightly News for all of the PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers and viewers. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We are streaming free for radio listeners, uh, video at InfoWars.com forward slash show uh, of the radio slash TV show to add a dimension of documentation to it with the different articles and video clips and guests and studio we have. You can also find the free iPhone app, the free Droid app, the free podcast, everything at InfoWars.com forward slash show. And please pass that on to your friends and family. And remember with your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships to see all my films, my book, Paul Watson's book, special live events that we transmit there, the nightly news live as it happens, the archives, the HD, uh, 18 years of material, 11 years up and running, PrisonPlanet.tv. Each membership is not just $5.95 a month, it's 11 memberships. 11 people can use the same username passcode to log in simultaneously. That's Operation Awaken the Sleeping Giant. And so I'm begging you with Operation Awaken the Sleeping Giant to share that username passcode. Make sure it's an original one you've made just for the site so you can share it. it doesn't, you don't want to have the same code to your bank account. So again, 11 memberships for $5.95 a month. Please become subscribers today and, and, and really vote with your dollars to get behind free speech. Now listen, I always had a sense of justice growing up. And I, like all cultures, all groups, you know, I find it to be interesting, exciting. And I also studied a lot of history, so I know that the system uses divide and conquer to manipulate people. And they use tribalism, which is really the new racism. The globalists will play one African tribe off against another, or one English tribe off against a Scottish tribe, or Catholics off against Protestants, or Protestants off against Catholics, or Protestants off against Seventh-day Adventists, or on and on and on. People love to get in groups, love to get in gangs. But there was a uh, Trent Leonard case about a year ago where this guy, uh, his only crime was being poor, because I know they take white uh, people's kids when they're poor as well. He worked hard mowing yards in the area and as a maintenance man running a storage area. But they thought his home that he built there was not fancy enough, uh, and they took his children. And I, I, and I saw Quan L. X covering it, the head of the Black Panther, new Black Panther Party there in Houston, one of the biggest chapters in the country and a national leader in it, and I went and looked up the case. I went and read about it in the Houston Chronicle. I went and checked it. It was true. They were persecuting this guy. And I would have come to his aid if it was brought to my attention. Uh, and it was admitted that CPS was saying being poor was a crime. And I came to the guy's aid. We raised money, and he got his kids back. And so it's not my job to get Quan LX on here and call him names, even though I don't agree with a lot of things he says. It's really to try to understand this. Because I, I could get a big crowd right now if I wanted to go say the things he's saying from a white perspective. And I got to be honest, I mean, I see things being spouted by the white separatist groups that are basically what the black groups are saying. And, I, and at the end of the day, I see the Black Panther, new Black Panther group, I have a video of this. Uh, you know, Zimmerman's a no good Jew, say Black Panther's out of Florida. And, and my whole issue is, really, so, so you know, getting at this, why is it okay if, if you're black to then say things, but it's not okay if you're white? I just want to stop letting the system use race to control everybody. And then I get that there are things that are done wrong to black people, like driving while black, walking while black. A lot of black friends growing up in Dallas, I remember being pulled over and things, uh, or for walking down the street when I had a black friend with me. I, I get all that. But what does all of this division do to fix it? Now, now I've said my piece on that, and I want to get his take. Quan LX is the leader of the New Black Panther Party in Houston, Texas, qxjustice.com. I want to get... His take on this, because he does go out when nobody else, else, you know, the regular black leaders say, hey, take our kids, put us in prison, feed on us, you know, food to the government, have all the forced abortions, you know, where they pressure people into having abortions, uh, sterilize black women. That's going on in California right now. And then the white liberals go, well, there are too many black people. My whole issue is that's the real racism. And but but and, and so I hear a lot of stuff. I disagree from the new Black Panther Party, but then I hear things that. I agree coming out of them. So I want to get to the bottom of, the, of this with us, uh, with our guest today. He's going to be here till about 50 after, then I'll take some calls. But Quan LX, thank you for coming on the broadcast today. And thank you for having me, Mr. Jones. I want to greet you and your listening audience and the greeting words of peace to Barcelona Lincoln. Those words simply mean may peace be unto you. 
and I am the national leader of the new Black Panther. Okay, so you're the national leader. I want to be clear, uh, so I apologize for getting that wrong. Uh, can you speak right on your telephone? It's a, it's a little bit low. I said that I am the national leader of the new Black Panther Nation. I split with the new Black Panther Party several years back, and I'm the national leader of the new Black Panther Nation. Okay, so it's the new Black Panther Nation. Great. I'm, I'm sorry I got that wrong. I've got several bios here. Break down your take on Zimmerman, where you think this is going, the armed march yesterday, and both sides, and what was happening there. Let me put this entire Zimmerman case in context. Was Zimmerman attempting to do something good in his community by being a neighborhood watchman? Yes. Was he doing something good by volunteering people who had their homes broke into his phone number, you can call me or my wife if you need assistance or help. Yes. Was he attempting to do something good with some children that he may have mentored that needed a mentor? Absolutely. But did he do something wrong and bad on that night that he encountered Trayvon Martin? Absolutely he did. Trayvon Martin had a right to go home. He was not breaking any laws. He was committing no crimes. There's no evidence anywhere to support or suggest he was committing any crimes that night that he was walking home. Zimmerman racially profiled, some would say profiled, but I believe racially profiled Trayvon Martin. Before he ever spoke to Trayvon Martin, he called him an effing hunk, an effing thug. They always get away with it. So he got out of his vehicle with a preconceived mindset that he was going to approach a thug and a criminal. This young man, that night going home, was neither. The young man was walking with Skittles and a can of Arizona tea that he's going back to his home. You have a right, Mr. Jones. I have a right, and every citizen in this country. If we're not breaking the law, our children have a right to walk home, not being profiled or accosted. And I believe that George Zimmerman was the pursuer. He was the one doing the stalking, and he was the one already had his mind made up when he approached Trayvon Martin. I do not believe that Mr. Zimmerman had to kill Trayvon Martin that night. And if he felt Trayvon Martin was a threat, well, then wait till the police get there and do their job. Now, if you're protecting a neighbor and he's committing a crime and you use your firearm, that's a different story. But there was no crime being committed, so there was no need for him to approach that young man. But he said he looked suspicious, looked like he's on drugs. I don't think he belongs around here. Those are the racial stereotypes that we believe played a significant role in the Zimmerman case. Again, the uh, national leader of the New Black Panther Party Nation, Quan L. X, is joining us. He led a big demonstration in Houston yesterday, and we're trying to get his perspective on this. Pulling back, though, uh, what do you think Obama's doing with this whole case? I mean, undoubtedly, the Justice Department went down there, tried to stir things up. It's a tragedy. I don't think we know what really happened. That's why he was found not guilty. There's reasonable doubt. From my perspective, Jimmy Carter has said that. I don't think he said it because he's racist. I think he said it because he actually followed the trial. But I think they chose this case because it is debatable, I believe, from both sides, to create a political diversion. Now, now that's my take on it. What do you think in a larger context uh, is going on here? I have listened to everything that the president said in his address to the nation in regards to the Trayvon Martin case. And I agree, he said some valuable things. I can appreciate that. But he did not say the one thing I was hoping that he would say. Not one African-American leader, none of my brothers and sisters, from community activists to congressmen to uh, leaders of organizations, etc. none of them asked Obama to do one thing. I asked the president of the United States of America, since there's a great controversy in the Zimmerman case, of whose voice it was screaming on that 911 call, I'm asking President Obama to bring in your very best voice analyzers that you have working in the CIA and the Pentagon and give the American people the answer. Because the court may have not been able to conclude it, the judge may have not known, the prosecutors and defense may differ on that, but I believe that the super counterintelligence program in America's government has the ability to tell everybody whose voice that was screaming on 
from that 911 tape. If we could determine who that was screaming, with it, I think that would solve a whole lot of the pain that's out here right now behind this verdict involving George Zimmerman. See, see, when I have you on, you sound reasonable, and then I see quotes attributed to you, uh, you know, saying uh, some pretty radical things. What, what is your view in general, uh, Quan LX, uh, on white people and black folks in this country? Because my issue is there's a whole world out there, other things going on. And, and, and why do you think the media loves to obsess on race all day? If you would like to, to take me to task on something that you have read that I have said, I offer you to please do so. I'm not going to run and hide from anything that I've said. Because I'm a man who means what he says and says exactly what he means. Okay, but I mean, um, you, I mean, you know some of those controversial statements. Do you think white people are inherently more corrupt and evil than other groups? I believe that the mindset of white supremacy is inherently evil. I also believe the mindset of black self-destruction and black self-inferiority is evil. A skin color don't make a man evil. A skin color can't make a woman evil because you and all the I can control what skin color we're born into this world. So for any human being to be hated strictly on their skin color is ignorance and foolishness. But if your mindset is that you are better because you're white or you're better because you're black or you're inferior because you're white or inferior because you're black, well, there's something wrong with that ignominious mindset. The problem in America, the number one enemy of white people and the number one enemy of black people in this nation is ignorance. And we are not willing to try to eradicate ignorance by any means necessary, both black and white. Most white people, Sometimes they're racist and don't even know it. But it's not because they hate black people. It's because they are ignorant to exactly what they're saying, what they're doing, what they've been taught. It's the same thing. Yeah, but doesn't, doesn't, doesn't MSNBC hyping this stuff up actually create more, not even racism, but more of just paranoia on all sides? I would say MSNBC has a right to do exactly what they're doing. And I don't watch a lot of MSNBC. Because some of the commentary and some of what they say, I'm very uncomfortable with. But I don't watch a lot of Fox News because I'm just as uncomfortable with that. I respectfully say to you, Mr. Jones, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, none of them are willing to speak the raw, unadulterated truth to the American people. So I can't be a big fan of neither one of them because none of them are willing to let People tell and speak the truth. They bring people on to the show that will bring calm to the situation, that won't rock the boat. But I say the boat of ignorance in America needs sure. to have a hole knocked in it, not just rocked. But none of them are willing to do it. Let's be honest. Well, I mean, here's Look my issue. We're overrun by foreign megabanks. Our, our government's funding al-Qaeda to take over all these countries. There's a, they're, they're spiking the water with poison on record to dump everybody down. White folks don't get a memo saying, don't drink the fluoride water. And it's 100% meant to hurt us. There's government documents, it's on record, Harvard studies, you name it. And then instead, I see the very establishment injecting race, 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 and then claiming they want to clean up the problem. I put forward that the obsession on all this race issue is meant to actually keep it going. I mean, I mean, here's an example. Uh, this has been confirmed by Gateway Pundit. We've confirmed it right here in Austin. We have an article, false flag, leftist run false flag against George Zimmerman up on Infowars.com. And I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm just looking for the truth. Left wing plant at Houston Pro Zimmerman Rally is far left activist that works for a federally funded environmental group uh, saying we're racist and proud. And she ran around trying to stir up the black crowd there. Now, 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 what do you say about not white people that are paranoid of black folks? They don't hate them. They're just scared because of the media. Or black folks that think all the whites are out to get them, so then they're paranoid. It kind of creates the self-fulfilling prophecy. And you got real racists out there as well. What do you say to that special type, the liberal, trendy activist who I know, not this woman, but people like her that I've met and talked to, who at the end of the day are the actual racist and want to abort all the black people if they had had their druthers, the Margaret Singer type. I mean, Aquan LX, are you aware, I'm not trying to be condescending, but most people aren't, are you aware of that breed of master manipulator? Let me study this. 
The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that you cannot phantom the depths of the devil. We really have been so deceived by the government of the United States. Many of us can't even phantom to what depths these people will go to to manipulate the masses of the ignorant people who are not well informed and well learned and well read. See, nobody wants to talk about what role does the Bilderberg Group play and what's happening inside of America and around the world. But if you can keep petty common white people and petty common black people misguided looking at each other, we're not looking at what's really behind all of this. Do I doubt that there was a plant at that particular march? It wasn't a plant just on that side. There were plants on both sides. There were people there who were marching with us that I had to check because they were attempting to create a confrontation because they had a different agenda. But I was already warned by my office that potentially the government and law enforcement would have people planted among us pretending to be protesters with a hidden platform and a hidden agenda. So I don't doubt it at all, but I ask the American people, both black and white, what are you willing to sacrifice to really expose the truth? If you're not willing to sacrifice that pretty home that you have in the suburbs and that job that you have and you're only one paycheck away from poverty, if you you're not willing to give up something to expose the truth to free the minds of both black and white in this country, we are not going to be successful. I want to eradicate that myth that Quanio X hates white people. That's a lie. Okay, well, since you raised that, since you, since you raised that, oh, no, no, finish your point, sorry. But what I do hate is how white people have not been willing to go to war to tell black people the truth. White people who have been in power and are still currently in power have not been willing to expose other white people who have gotten rich off the back and the ignorance of black people. They are not willing to fight to expose the truth to us while teenagers. Well, sure, children. but I mean, look, the average white person's just like the average Hispanic or black person or Asian I know, they just want to go to work, get their money, go home, watch TV. They don't even know what planet they're on. That, that, and, and instead, the liberal media that's not liberal at all is just race, 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 where people are like, man, I, I'm sick of hearing about this. But, but listen, expanding on this, since you raise it, because I'm not here to attack you, I'm here to understand these statements, or I've had media put stuff out and say that I've said it before, and I didn't say it. Uh, but reportedly, you were quoted by the New York Daily News as saying, I say to Jewish America, get ready, knuckle up, put your boots on because we're ready and war is going down. The real deal is black youth do not want a relationship with the Jewish community or the mainstream white community or the uh, foot shuffling. Well, I mean, look at Al Sharpton has been given a job at MSNBC. Head bowing, knee bobbing black community. All you Jews go straight to hell. Uh, here's another one you reportedly said. If you feel that you just got to mug somebody because you're hurt and, you, and you're in pain, go to River Oaks and mug you some uh, white folks. If you're angry that your brother is put to death, don't burn down your own community. Give these white folks hell from the womb to the tomb. Now, now, are those statements out of context or what do you mean by those? And let me explain both of them. The comments that I made in 1995 as the National Youth Minister of the Nation of Islam what I said was we were holding a black Holocaust convention in Washington, D.C. in October of 1995. There were Jewish people outside marching against us using the term Holocaust. And they felt that we did not have the right to apply the term Holocaust to the transatlantic slave trade and the genocidal practice of what happened in the rest in the Middle Passage during slavery. And they were saying, death to Farrakhan, death to Farrakhan. This was a day before the Million Man March. And what I said was that if those Jews outside protesting cannot respect the black Holocaust, why should we respect theirs? If they can't respect the suffering of black people, and many 
more millions died in the transatlantic slave trade. And they want us to respect that stuff and we won't respect ours. I say to hell with those Jews. Guard your grill, knuckle up. Put your boots on because the war is going down. And I stand by that to this day. That if you cannot respect another people's suffering but demand that we respect yours, that's racism. That's insensitivity. Suffering is suffering no matter who the people is. If it's legitimate suffering, we yeah, well, respect I, I mean, undoubtedly, a lot more black people died in the transatlantic slave trade than were than killed in World War II total. I mean, you have to understand, though, and I mean, it's a terrible thing. On average, about 90% of the sailors after three or more missions died uh, as well. It was, and, and as you know, most of the sailors were actually white slaves on press gangs, stolen from their homes in England and put on those ships. Did you know that, Quan LX? I do know that. And what we also know to be a fact that three quarters of the slave cargo never made it to America. Three quarters because of disease and malnutrition were thrown overboard with ever ever. Yeah, and the sharks America. followed. Yeah, some numbers are half, Absolutely. some numbers are yeah, or so two thirds. We're talking about three quarters of at least a uh, Fifty million that were brought off that mill. Yeah, that's it's it's definitely in the millions and millions. You can, they're not sure historically. We'll be right back. I want to hear more about this with you. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at Infowars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. 
I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past. And I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the new world order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. My agenda is that I believe what comes around goes around. You reap what you sow. You call it karma, whatever. You don't get away with stuff. And it is not taught in all the Steven Spielberg movies that one big reason for the Revolutionary War was the press gangs impressment, where on average it was five to ten years of slavery. And they would drag you along the bottom of the boat and kill you. They'd whip you. And it's bad for doing it to a black guy. It's bad for doing it to a white guy. The point is, is that you know the Spanish galleys would grab other sailors and put them as slaves in the bottom to work them to death. This is what barbarism was, and and it still goes on. And the last group that it was okay to do it to was black people, and that's terrible. But I think there's this attempt to create dependency, and this idea that well, I can't ever be successful because of you know uh, I, I come from slaves. I mean, almost everybody comes from slaves. And it, it's a ignorance of history that's pushed. And, and you notice we have the leader, the national leader of the new Black Panther Party nation on with us. I want to give you the floor for the rest of this segment because you had some points you wanted to make uh, about so-called liberal media. Uh, by the way, the woman who was, went out there with a the sign saying we're, we're racist and proud that the AP and MSNBC ran with, she now says it was a joke. Yeah, you, know, you got caught in the false flag there. You, and, and, and our article de detailing that is on InfoWars.com. But, but Quan Alex, just so we can understand this, what happened with you and the, and, the, and the new Black Panther Party? And then, of course, I've had members of the original Black Panther Party on who are very critical of the uh, new Black Panther Party. What is the difference? I always hear about you. Is your group becoming bigger? Uh, explain to us why you had a split. Because i got to tell you, I see some of these new Black Panther Party people and the stuff they say and do, and they act like plants. I've proven a lot of white supremacists are actually feds, like Hal Turner and others. And I got to say, a lot of the new Black Panther Party people, I mean, there's no way they're saying and doing these things uh, on their own. It, it, it's, it's scripted to make them sound like idiots, in my opinion. Let me say what the real issue is here with African-American leadership, including the revolutionary wing of the movement. We must be consistent in our call and application of justice. We cannot, we cannot point out the evil of what white people do or some white person has done. But we are not willing to use that same platform, that same energy for the evil that's being carried out by us on us. And that was my disagreement with the original leadership of the new Black Panther Party. I love them, those are my brothers and my sisters. But we cannot put a $10,000 bounty on George Zimmerman. But we would not put a $10,000 bounty on men that's raping young black children and kidnapping and abducting young black children. We are not willing to put a $10,000 bounty on a man that is a serial rapist of black women. If we got $10,000, and we don't need a body for George Zimmerman, black people will go after him for free. But if we're going to spend $10,000 on a bounty on the head of somebody, there are black men right now who are in our community who are doing things 10 times worse than what George Zimmerman has ever done or can do. And so if we're going to point out the evil of people like George Zimmerman and the wrong of him, we got wrong, if not louder when that enemy looks like us and comes from among our community. 
That's my problem with us. We must be consistent on the principles of truth or God will remove his hand from us. And he will not assist us nor help us in what we are trying to do. So that's my position. Those are the real differences. We must be just as diligent, man. And I don't see that happening, but I've tried to be consistent in that. I've held more rallies in Texas and in Louisiana against black-on-black crime than any other African-American leader in this region. In fact, check your facts, Alex Jones. I've turned more black men in off the street for killing other black people into the into jail than any other black leader in America. I've solved more on black murders in this country than any other black leader in America. So if I was anti white and only pro-black, why am I taking black men off the streets who are killing other black people when the police couldn't solve Let me ask you this question because you wanted to get into the, the so-called leftist media and you were saying some interesting things during the break, so I'd like you to repeat those. You got pretty, uh, pretty hot when you were talking about it and I understand why. Why do you think there was less black illegitimacy pre-civil rights movement than, 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 than whites? There were more whites with single parent families than there were blacks. How did the numbers completely flip where now 94% of uh, blacks that are murdered since 1976 are killed by other blacks? Why, what happened, what was done uh, in, in your view? The Honorable Light Muhammad taught us that integration was a hypocritical trick. We as African Americans really did need to fight for social integration the way that we did. Morally, it was the right thing to do, yes. But strategically, it was not the wisest thing to do. Because morally, we should all be one race and one human family. But strategically, that was not the living reality in America for black people. Do you realize, Alex, that during segregation, we built black hospitals, we built black banks, we had black transportation companies, black hotels and motels, black insurance agencies. We had black loan companies doing segregation. We were building and establishing black universities doing segregation. And the big mega banks saw that just like they bombed Libya or Syria or any other sovereign nation. Right, blacks were getting rich. You're absolutely right. Uh, the, uh, look, it sounds good. You know, have women all go into the workforce. Well, if a woman wants to, sure, but it's declassified. The whole suffrage m movement was run by the Department of War to get women in there so they could tax them and have the state raise the children. A fact. Sounds great. And, and if women want to work, that's wonderful. The point is they force the economy now where a woman's got to work or, the, or somebody's, you know, both have to work regardless of whether somebody wants to stay home or not. And in that is the secret. The globalism does not want you to spend your money in your community. They want it going to them for control. And that's the name of the game of the New World Order. And that's what my dad talked about. That's what the history shows. Black people were becoming upwardly mobile, but in their own giant economies that were actually becoming so popular they were even being patronized by whites at that point. Right. And the system and the Democratic Party of the Ku Klux Klan said, we can't beat these Republicans and the civil rights movement. Let's own it, but do race politics, playing sides off against each other. And that is the official plan of these people, like Chris Matthews and other disgusting maggots like him. And this is not our opinion. This is historical truth. So, so get into what the so-called liberals did, what you were saying earlier during the break.
We didn't even need that kind of welfare program going segregation. You rarely, I was a young boy, I'm 42 years old, but I remember as a child, I never saw a homeless black person in my community. Everybody fed everybody. And when somebody died, black women would go door to door and get money from everybody in the neighborhood to bury that person. We didn't need no death insurance, you call life insurance. Nobody was homeless, everybody fed. We fed one another. But they brought us a welfare program. And look at the word welfare. Turn the word around. It means farewell to being the independent people you once were and you were becoming. And so they told black women, I'm a product of the welfare program in America. We were on welfare for years. And I know what it did. I remember as a young boy, the welfare workers would come by the house and they would ask my mother, are you dating anyone? Have you seen the children's father? Has they, have they brought anything to him? Do you have any gifts that he's brought? Has he paid for anything? Well, you know if you accept any gifts from him or he gives you any money and you don't report it, we'll cut you off and you lose all your benefits. But my aunties will allow their baby after baby after baby. As long as they had no man in the home and no man involved, they would continue to receive those benefits. That produced a whole people for four decades with the mindset of codependency and guilt the independent spirit. And I'm sure you've read what Margaret Sanger, I'm sure you've read what Margaret Sanger said, that's the official plan, that's not our opinion. So this is why the media takes out of context what you say, because they don't want people hearing the large uh, overall statement of what you've had to say here. And I can disagree with- No black woman, no black woman in America should ever go to Planned Parenthood. But I am a supporter of the right of choice, Alex. Choose who you're going to lay down with. That's your biggest right of choice. Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, was a believer in eugenics and the extermination of black people. I know. But many, but millions of black people will go through there. I'm telling you, I've been at the liberal meetings. The truth. I've been at the liberal meetings. These are the most racist people on earth. I mean, it is incredible. And I've even talked to their black operatives and they know it and say there are too many black people. And again, my bottom line is I don't want to hear how I'm racist all day. If I think that there was uh, obviously uh, from the evidence, uh, you know, reasonable doubt in the Zimmerman case and it becomes this football. Well, meanwhile, the real program's going on now. I want to raise I want to raise this point to you uh, because it's very, very important. Slavery is terrible. It's wrong. It's horrible. On and on and on. But, but look at the penal slave colony of Australia, so successful because the people that colonized it were white slaves, white prisoners in work brigades. Look at the U.S. for all its problems, founded by indentured servants, slaves, you name it, rough, tough, you, know, I mean, you name it, productive. That which does not kill you only makes you stronger, and the system knows that. So they took the incredibly powerful, wealthy, black engine that was that that was absolutely upwardly mobile and they blew it into a thousand pieces and that's why you've seen the wreckage and the model they've done to the blacks on record is the model for every community now so i want people to know when you watch the nightly news the, the mainstream news and you see those messages in it that all seem liberal and trendy those are psychological warfare torpedoes your comment on that you know i i want to warn everybody in this country who are listening to this radio show. When you see a black person who hates a white person strictly because they're white, or you see some white person strictly hating some black person or other race because of their skin color, that's a dumb devil. When you see some of these people who come on television who don't know the behind from a hole in the ground when it comes to the raw truth of what the problem is in America, that's a dumb devil. Don't worry about the dumb devils. You might want to pay close attention to the wise Satan that's sitting behind the scenes that we don't see every day. I'm talking about that 5% of the people who controls the world's global economy. Those are the real enemies of the United States citizens. But, it, but so Quanell, it's not even 5%. We've done the math. It's not even 1%. 
It's I can it, believe that. It's point zero 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 two six. I can believe There's that. only about six thousand globalists that, that that brag. Rothkop wrote a book, head of the Kissinger Group, that actually run things. I'm telling you, I know people worth fifty million dollars who don't even know how to tie their shoelaces. It's a very small technocratic group. But but I want to ask, is this why and you? Folks, and, and, and and we ain't talking about folks that got fifty million dollars. They ain't got no money. The people we're talking about are those who have multi-billion. Those are the people we're talking about. No, I, no, I agree. Uh, it, it's so crazy having you on and agreeing with almost everything you say. Let's talk about, though, uh, the spokesman in Jacksonville, Florida, for the Black Panther Party. I want to play this clip and get your your uh, your your take from this because uh, this is the kind of stuff that the, that the media is using. And my whole issue is this sounds like the stuff that comes out of the mouths of white supremacists. Let's go to the Black Panther Party in Florida. Here it is. Just speak to the city of Jacksonville. We wanted to tell our side of the story that we got involved because when we went to Sanford in the initial stages, there was a, a attempt to cover up this case. And so we went down and we investigated and we found out the true facts and that Trayvon had been assassinated by a wicked white beast who today is talking about he's a Hispanic. And so we're not going to go along with that. We don't care because his father's a Jew. He's a no good Jew. To sit before the world, George Zimmerman, and try to justify the brutal assassination and murder of Trayvon Martin. All right, that's enough. That's uh, Mukail Muhammad. My whole point is, that sounds like the exact same stuff I hear out of the white supremacist all day, who do nothing but obsess over Jews all day. And it's it just, you know, I know Jewish people. I have Jewish friends. They're not off scheming some great evil. And, and, and I understand that... You know, in the Rothschilds and people are Jewish and are part of the New World Order at the tops of it. But I see the whole Israel-Palestinian thing as another globalist puppet show. Your take on, on what you just heard from the new Black Panther Party. Well, that is my brother, Brother Muhammad. I don't know him personally, but he wears the name Muhammad. So obviously he's a Muslim, and I am a Muslim. I would want, I would want to encourage my dear brother to go and truly read the Holy Quran, and read the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The question was raised to Muhammad, who did he see in heaven? And Muhammad said he saw Jews, Christians, and Muslims in heaven and paradise. It's not what you call yourself that makes you righteous today. It's what you do and how you do. So to call his father no good to you, I don't know his father. But there are some very good Jews. So every person that wears the title Jew don't make them no good. Because now you're saying Allah, who allowed the Jews to come into existence and said they would be in paradise, you're saying God is wrong. So I would say to my brother, what makes you no good is your conduct, your behavior, and your way of thinking. All right. If man was wrong for what he did, he should be punished. Well, l listen, I think there was reasonable doubt, and that's what Jimmy Carter says, but but I can see your point. Quan LX, I'm glad that we had a real discussion here instead of just a big diversion and a fight. And uh, I, I want to come back and ask you one more question, and then I'll let you go. I want to ask about uh, the, the media said you guys were armed, and then the other uh, pro Zimmerman protesters were armed. And I want to talk about that, and uh, was there any type of confrontation, and, uh, you know, our, uh, Obviously, I'm, I'm sure you're glad that nothing bad happened there and, and what the police were up to. We'll get a final report from you on that straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. 
folks all over the country, whether you're black or white, doesn't matter what color you are, the police are doing proctology exams without warrants on the side of the road. Now, Arkansas police add saliva tests to check for drugs and alcohol without warrants. Look, you're not sticking your saliva test, and I know you're keeping the DNA, because every time you get saliva, there's, there's, there's cheek cells and tongue cells in it. That's how you do it. I mean, it's just, it's just scary. No, you're not going to stick in your gangster state. Great state, by the way, but the government's totally gangster in my mouth. It's all about getting in our business. Leftist caught running Zimmerman frame up. Uh, Rand Paul, Obama's goal in Syria is to fight to a stalemate. We've got a new comedy film. Talk to your kids about the dangers of royal weddings. That's a, uh, one of the entries to the Paul Revere contest. Just amazing info up on prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. No fly zone over Syria, an act of war, General Dempsey warns. Absolutely, things are just escalating big time. Uh, Quan LX, I'm gonna go to a little bit of overdrive and take phone calls here from uh, folks like Jacqueline and others that are patiently holding. Uh, you were making some more points during the break about when the Chinese come marching up 45, repeat that and make any other points about the demonstration and your security guys were armed. You said some of the pro Zimmerman people were armed. I mean, that's exactly what the New World Order wants, but go ahead. It is true that some of my security were armed, but those members of my security were those who have legal concealed handgun permits to carry those weapons. And those weapons they've carried for years, but it's only those who have the legal concealed handgun permit permit to carry those weapons. There was never anyone... Yeah, but you've got a right to open carry in Texas without a permit. I agree with you right there. I'm saying the globalist would love to get a shooting war going between black and white. Oh, no doubt about it. And there were one or two who had firearms out in the open with the counter-protesters, but we were not bothered by that because we knew that that was more demonstration than actual stuff. So and you've done, you've done open carry demonstrations. We have had open carry demonstrations. Yes, we have. And so if it was my desire to have an open carry demonstration, I would have done that, but I have not done Was that. it the Black the Panthers country. that were the first to do that? Didn't Khalid Muhammad, yes. who was the old leader that died? Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. Yeah, he was the guy that killed the white babies of the military manufacturing center. I mean, did he still believe that when he died? I believe that Khalid, but Brother Khalid Muhammad believed everything he absolutely spoke and did before he passed. Do you agree that we should kill the babies and kill the white women because of the military manufacturing center? I believe that which the Honorable Minister of Farrakhan has taught me and teaches others. We have to kill the mindset of hatred in America. To kill the mindset of... No, I know, but I mean, I'm glad to see the views softening because I saw the Anthony Hilder debate he did with him when... Uh, when uh, 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 Khalid Muhammad said, you know, we, we need to kill all the white people. And you've seen these professors say that. You don't, you don't agree with that. No, you cannot kill innocent babies from the womb. You don't do no madness like that. That's the same thing that Hitler attempted to do. Brother Minister Khalid Abdul Muhammad was absolutely in love with his people. But he was one of the most bold, uncompromising revolutionists we had ever produced. And he was born directly, I believe, out of the line of the worst oppression among our people in the Sure, country. well, he died young, too. Do you, do you think he might have been killed? I thought he died pretty young. I believe he absolutely was assassinated, but we won't get into who I believe did it either. That'd be a whole other show. Yeah, I mean, he, what was it, a stroke or something? Like, he was pretty young. He died from an aneurysm, and he died very young. And in fact, I was in the hospital when we announced his death. I was in the hospital before he passed away. I was right there in the very thick of it all when decisions were being made, when sure. decisions were being made. And I absolutely know for a fact that a lot of things that were done were not right. And in fact, they were outright, downright suspicious. All right, well, we're going to have to have you back. Quan LX, we're out of time. I appreciate you joining us and spending time with us. The website is qxjustice.com and hopefully you can pop back in from time to time. Sometime I want to get you on Skype because the quality is amazing there. Uh, but but thank you for bringing us your perspective and uh, thank you. And, and I'm glad nothing violent happened yesterday. Take care. Thank you very much. God bless. Bye -bye. Thank you. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show.
You know, we can dig up the clip of his mentor, you know, when he's talking about kill the white babies, kill the beautiful blue-eyed babies, because they're going to grow up to kill your babies. And when the white woman lays down every month, reinforcements rolls out. So we kill the military manufacturing center. It actually hurt like to do a perfect imitation. I love doing imitations, as everybody knows. Uh, and <laughs> but, but but I'm glad that Quan LX is 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 doesn't talk like that now. Uh, and 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 it's I think he genuinely gets that humanity has to come together. The globalists are trying to play us off against each other. Race politics works for a while, uh, but it's it's just so destructive. And I'm telling you, so much of what you hear come out of the black and Hispanic radical groups sounds like the Ku Klux Klan. And then as racism is promoted by the media, then it becomes a tactical issue of, well, I'm, I'm not racist, but everybody's saying I'm racist and saying I'm bad. They're being racist to me. So then you get forced into it. It's kind of like, I'm not really a Republican. I'm a libertarian. But the Democrats have always hated me because they're the party of really bringing in the new world order. The, the, the Republicans are kind of their placeholder. And so the Republican libertarian arm has been nicer to me. And so whether I like it or not, I'm put in that camp. And that's the camp you just become part of. And the system knows that. It, it makes you choose a side. And uh, I just wish we would all become aware of the manipulation and come together for... We love to be in gangs. Let's have a gang of liberty that's based on human justice, free market ideas, where we admire people that build better and better things and who stand up for what's right in a culture of virtue. Let's reach for the stars or fall into hell. The choice is up to you. Let's talk to Pete in California. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Uh, nice to uh, hear that show. That was a pretty, a pretty amazing show right there. Uh wanted to, to let you guys know that uh yeah you had a lot of call waiting happening so it was like clicking in and out but overall it was, it was an interesting interview yeah it was uh you know to kind of hear that perspective it kind of uh you know being out here in uh, santa clara I'm a, I'm a i'm a latino guy i grew up in los angeles and i'm out here in uh santa clara out here so you know this division that they're really trying to push uh, on americans it's just it, it's it makes me sick to my stomach it, it just really does and uh you know, I have two daughters, and, and I definitely always tell my girls, you know, raise, raise don't be raised. There's, there's no such thing as race. You know, it, it's all about pure love you're talking about earlier. You're like, gotta love humanity. But, but instead of, but, but if you're just gonna be, but you've also gotta have some culture. And the globalists are overriding all of our cultures and bringing in this plastic corporate death. We know we don't want that. No, absolutely not. <laughs> That, that's where you, that's where you have to be smart about what's going on. You, you have to be awake. You know, I, I, I tell my friends and my family and everybody I'm in contact with, you know, the, you, you got to connect the dots. You got to be awake. You know, you you just can't just you know be in the zombie mode. <laughs> Last night I watched uh, Casablanca, and uh, and it kind of it kind of uh, opened my my mind a little bit about what was going on in this movie. They had all the Germans there. They had the you know the French, and then they had uh, Humphrey Humphrey Bogart there. You know, he was this kind of neutral guy that really cared about Annie, which is more about himself. You have to choose a side right now because, uh, you know, right now in the United States... Uh, exactly, and they want you to choose a false side that they control the narrative on. They don't want us to come together under a Bill of Rights, Constitution, Declaration of Independence, getting out from under the private federal reserve. That's the enemy. They want us fighting, and, and again, it becomes racial because let's say they program Mexico that you're collapsing, so come here, then they go under Democratic Party control, you have to oppose that, but not because you dislike all these poor refugees of the New World Order, you understand it's part of a larger program. So it doesn't mean that there aren't strategic things that go on, it means that you understand the great game and now you're part of the great game, countering it from a master strategic position, being aware of getting outside the box. Get outside the box, step outside the box. That's what it's all about. Become aware of the game and then decide not to play and to build your own game. A stairway to the stars. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're gonna get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present.
Shoulders and Arms, 50 Cal Ammo Review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the InfoWar. Well, the media is pressuring John Boner, the uh, head of the uh, House, to go along with Obamacare and to expand it. And you got Wiener uh, over there. Uh, you got Wiener and Boner and all of them uh, running for mayor again. Uh, there just seems to be no end to any of this. All right, that was a horrible attempt at stupid humor. It's now turned into the Benny Hill show. Don't we have the Benny Hill soundtrack for screw ups around here? Yeah, we should have that more often on the show when we like try to go to a. Now, when I was a kid, I used to stay up late when I'd stay at friends' houses, watch Benny Hill. Technical difficulties. Gotta love it. All right, you've been holding long enough. I went into overdrive to take your phone calls. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Marvin in Texas. Let's talk about Quan LX. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. That, that actually threw me for a loop. Uh, he came out pretty knowledgeable, which I knew he was. But uh, just, I, I've talked to Michelle Williams in Tampa, Florida. You remember her? the big new black panther party girl. yeah oh yeah really a moronic we, person we, no 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 actually on the phone this is this kind of reminded me of this on the phone she is highly intelligent I've, I've spoken with her i called her out i've been threatened by the new black panther party blah 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 it doesn't it doesn't scare me i actually gave him my address said come on over but the point being is is i want you to be careful with this guy with his listeners he'll say one thing come off perfect like a politician and then turn around and go back to his group and say another thing and it just no, no, listen, that's why I brought up um, Khalid Muhammad, which if you, I mean, it's like, I, I quoted it earlier. He said, you kill the white babies. Why? Because they'll grow up to kill your babies. And you kill the white woman because every nine months she lays down and reinforcement rolls out because of the military manufacturing center. I love, I love that clip, but we got to find that somewhere. Anthony Hilder has it. It's, it's, it. Oh, we have it. We're going to play it in a moment. When you talk about just, I, I could... Uh, if that guy was a nice preacher, gave a good Baptist sermon, I could go hear him on Sunday. I, I love his voice. The military, the military manufacturing center. Anyways, uh, I think I'm going to change my name to, to military manufacturing center. Sir, I'm going to come back to you, Marvin. Uh, here is the uh, de uh, deceased Dr. Muhammad. Uh, here he is. Why kill the women? First, why kill the babies? Not just little innocent blue-eyed babies. That's good. We ought to get that black professor too. Search black professor says kill all whites. It was a few years ago and they they defended it. So my whole point is this is like Hitler. I mean, that's a genocide. Kill everybody. Hey, don't worry. 7% of the world's white. Most whites are, quote, intermarrying. So there's not going to be any white people. But don't worry. If you got lighter skin, you're going to get killed because you got devil blood. And the devil blood is the most evil and has got to be dealt with. And if you're not as black as Dr. Muhammad, then we're going to chop your head off, you white devil. Anyways, kind of fun to talk like that. Hey, I can do the redneck voices. I can do the black preacher voices as well. I've actually been offered jobs and voiceovers in Hollywood. The problem is I'd have to live out there. They want you there to do like weekly auditions for movies and stuff. Maybe I should just do all that. Take my cracker butt out to Hollywood and make a bunch of money and sit around drinking pina coladas. But I'm not going to do it because I'm part of the military manufacturing center. Man, I love talking like that. <laughs> I think I should be my new persona. All right, let's go to uh, Jose. Oh, no, Marvin, uh, is that what you're talking about? Are you saying Quanell X talks like that? Uh, yeah, I, I'm just saying you got to be real careful with him because, uh, like, on the new Black Panther. But Arkansas, that's coming from a cracker. 
Yes, and I'm also in a biracial marriage, and she's part black. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, those babies are evil because they're part white and need to be dealt with. Yeah, but anyway, like on the Arkansas New Black Panther Party, they're talking about George Zimmerman must be killed, blah, blah, blah. Quanell associates with these people. So don't, I, when he said he wasn't part of them, he's probably not, but he still associates with them. I'm not, but listen, I just got the guy on so we could have a discussion and not just have a fight with each other. And it was actually very, it threw me for a loop. I was like, wow. And he, and he pulled the Michelle Williams. Because I would talk to Michelle Williams on the phone, and she would tell me, we got to do this, this, and this. I said, it makes perfect sense. Then she would go back out to her. Yeah, people. but she knows she doesn't get on the media unless she says kill, you know, all that kind of stuff they say. I appreciate your call. Let's talk to Jose in California. Jose, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, man. Uh, that guy is a liar. Uh, the blacks are the killers. Uh, all right, you're being murderers. sarcastic. That's enough. I appreciate your call, Jose. You're, you probably got a last name like Johnson or something. Now you're calling. <laughs> I mean, there's just no... People just love fighting over everything. I, 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 uh, the stupid Zimmerman stuff, man. I, I tell you, there's just no end to it. Oh, boy. Let's talk to Chris in New York. Chris, you're on the air. Should I do the whole show in the voice of uh, Khalid Muhammad? <laughs> Infowars.com tonight, 7 o'clock, the news. Al Sharpton, step aside. We're going to expose these racist cracker asses for what they are. Sorry. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, sir. You can turn your radio off. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm calling because of the fact that... Um, the uh, guest that was in the show just a minute ago um, said that Zimmerman, in quote, said that he's an effing dog and that he doesn't belong around here. I think the fact that he said he doesn't belong around here, it was because of the fact that he actually did not live around that area. And the only kid, and the only moment... I think there was some profiling because he was black and wearing a hoodie. I mean, look, when I was growing up, if I was walking around between houses, people come out and say, what are you doing? I mean, I mean that kind of stuff. Uh, plus, older folks don't know, and people like Zimmerman looks pretty pretty square, that that hoodies are have been in for like a decade. The hoodies are definitely in around my office because I keep it so cold around here. Everybody wears like Arctic outfits. But I mean, what do you think overall about all of this, Chris? Well, see, overall, I think that it has to be hyped up too much. To be used as a political tool. Absolutely. To Absolutely. To fact from the fact that, um, let me tell you something. When you give out your money to the bank, you become an unsecured creditor, and the bank is a debtor. The fact that it's not being talked about in the mainstream media is that Barack Obama made us all unsecured creditors to the private Fed. Absolutely. God bless you. Well, it's like Louis Farrakhan. He says a lot of stuff I agree with, like... You want to build up the black community? Spend your money in your local community. I mean, I go out of my way to try to go to little shops, little places, uh, whether they're black, white, Hispanic. I don't care. I like to go to mom and pops. Usually the food's better anyways. I try to go to little stores. I try to, I try to go with small local companies if they can give good service. And a lot of times it is better. Um, plus big companies, it's like the secret police or something. They've always got a side business of info. And so they're sitting there. You know, you're like having a police interrogation, you know, with the carpet cleaner or whatever, or with the yard people. Um, so, I mean, it's very, very simple. Things like that really make sense. I mean, I want, I wish Mexico was like Switzerland, man, with jet ports and awesome houses. And it's beautiful down there. I'd, and then I'd say merge Mexico with the U.S. I don't care what color the people are. I care about the culture. And the culture of Mexico is a failed kleptocracy. We don't want to merge with that. And that's like spoken like a blue-eyed devil. Let's talk to Lori in Arkansas. Last caller I have time for an overdrive. Sorry to the other people. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, uh, Lori. Are, are you ready to have the warrantless checkpoint take your DNA on the side of the highway cupcake? Hi, can you hear me, Mr. Jones? Yes, ma'am. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Okay. Um, first of all, you're not going to believe what I've been going through since July 1st here in the second largest city, Fort Smith, Arkansas. What's going on? I it's like you're not even in America, let alone the state of Arkansas. 
Um, let me try to make a long story short what occurred to me this past July. No, I know. They've got checkpoints, uh, curfews. Uh, is that what you're calling about? No, I was falsely arrested. Get this, Mr. Jones, for supposedly intercepting government operations here in Fort Smith, Arkansas, which is the second largest city in Arkansas. And all I was doing was waiting for a taxi cab, me and my beloved cats, to oh. go to a motel. Is the cat racist? I, was, huh, I am a not. I am a white person, but I am a You're racist. White we person. can't listen to you now. They are killing poor people as well here in Fort Smith. The, ra the cat's Arkansas. racist, ma'am. So, so I mean, I mean, let me be serious. They arrested you for intercepting government communications, and because they're all looking for spies, the spies run the government. But I mean, what happened to you, Mr. Jones? Me, and my three adult cats, with her five kittens, to go to the motel outside the Payless shoe stores. Let me tell you that the governor in Little Rock, Arkansas. He claims to be a Democrat. There is not a dark on thing. My cats are being held hostage at the Humane Society. They want me to pay them close to two thousand dollars. I was released from the jail cell July fifth. They arrest you for they arrested you for intercepting a government communication? Waiting for a cab, Mr. Jones, to go to the motel, me and my cats. Mm-hmm. And and, and so Jones. now they've arrested you as a spy? What uh, what's happening next? Get Mo? Oh, not a spy, Mr. Jones. I don't know. They made up some cockamamie excuse. They wanted the wagon back from the Dollar Tree store that it was a felony offense to take a wagon. But let me make a long story short. I was released from their uh, jail cell July 5th, and I'm trying to get my cats back from the Humane Society. They're holding them hostage. They want me to pay them close to $2,000. Well, they're obviously in league with Al-Qaeda, ma'am. I tell you what, I'm going to put you on hold, give you one of my riders. If you can show us proof, and this isn't a spoof call, then, then, then we're absolutely, because let me tell you, if it isn't a spoof call, it's amazing. Stuff just gets so much crazier. Man, we're going to try to get you some help here. I'm going to get you with one of our crack reporters, Julie Wilson, and we'll try to get your uh, your cats out of camp, get Mo. They will kill them. I mean, that's not a joke. But we all know those cats are racist, folks. I mean, one of them's white. <laughs> now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.